Friends, we have a special treat tonight. Before we go on with our barhu, we are going to welcome a baby. There's two babies here. We're welcoming your baby too, but well, we're doing the baby baby. <laughs> <laughs>
to share with us how they are making the better, world a better place on the Friday before that happens. So Ella, you're going to be called for Torres Bat Mitzvah on March 9th. And so now you're going to share. Thank you. 
to sing Shalom Rabbi. Did you feel it too? Because when people started singing it, it was like, wow, that was like a wave of Shalom Oh, friends, we are in the cycle of the building of the Mishkan. These eight different Parsha experiences of the building of the Mishkan that lead up to the Parsha, the eighth Parsha in this series called the Eighth, Shmini, that will be coming at the end of March. And all of us, turns out, will be in Big Bear when that happens. Because that is where our Nefesh retreat is happening this year. And this is all a plug. <laughs> There's more to this teaching. But I do want to say that I hope you will all join with us. It's, Nefesh retreats are a special thing to behold. So we really hope that everyone will be glad I'm coming long enough to go to a retreat. That's not true. Okay, or I've been coming for a little while, I already missed, I, I missed it. No, always you can jump in on this retreat experience. It's going to be amazing in the end of March <laughs> with Shmini the 8th. But we're not there yet. We have a lot of work to do, literally, work to do to build this Mishkan. What is the Mishkan? The Mishkan is this movable sanctuary, movable dwelling place for God's presence in the wilderness, a place where people could connect with the divine sanctuary. It had to be movable because we're traveling through the wilderness. We're camping out. We're in the wilderness. So we have to move this place. It's God everywhere all the time? Yes. We like to have sacred spaces where we connect with the divine? Yes. And more than this just being a sanctuary, in my experience of it, this is a project. This is a work project. How do you get a group of slaves to make the transition to free people? <laughs> Give them opportunities to develop who they are by working together as a community. So here we are. We're in this building process. We were asked, where's Olivia? We were asked with Olivia's parsha, right, where she was called to Torah's body, and taught about Teruma, right? We were asked to give donations from the heart. And people went back to their tents, and they looked through their stuff. Maybe they checked out what their neighbor was getting. They went back and gave a little bit more. <coughs> Maybe they didn't have to be asked to. They just ran back and were willing to go through their stuff, to donate all the things that were going to be melted down and changed into this new form, into this dwelling place form. And in this Parsha artisans, all those who are skilled were asked to come forward. People who could weave cloth, people who could pound wood, people who could flatten the gold and melt it down. They were all asked to come forward, those who were skilled. Skilled is what it's translated as. But it asks, actually says, wise-hearted. They were wise-hearted. That's what made them skilled. All of those who were wise-hearted were asked to come and do this building. And so they began. They began to step forward. I'm a wise-hearted weaver. I'm a wise-hearted hitter of a hammer very well. I could do these things. And they began, they began building with the donations that had come. But wait, there was a problem. There's always a problem. Wait, there's a problem. What's the problem? There's too much. All the people went back into their tents and they brought things. We asked for things. We didn't tell them what to give. We said to give from their heart, and now they're giving so much from their heart, there's too much, Moses. <laughs> and so Moses, we are told in Torah, commanded and proclaimed in the camp, saying, man and woman shall not do more work toward the Trumata, it's giving the portion for the sanctuary. 
and the nation was held back from bringing, and the work was sufficient for them, for all the work to do. The portions of giving was enough, and they had a surplus. We already have enough and a surplus, enough. Hold back from giving, it is enough. What does that feel like to proclaim? This wasn't a whisper, it was a proclamation. It is enough. Thank you for your giving. It is enough. What does it feel like to sit with a meal, eat it, and then have a moment where you say, oh, it is enough. What does it feel like to be inside of someone's embrace? a friend, a lover, a family member, and in the moment of the embrace, feel it and say, oh, it is enough. Proclaim it. That is from a place where enoughness is good. But what if we're in a place where we've had enough of something that's not good? There, too, we can proclaim it. This situation, that's enough. This challenging, conflicted relationship, that's enough. This work situation, that is enough. It's time to not, to stop giving to it. It's time to stop feeding it. There's an active giving to it. When we're in situations that we do not let no longer be in, and yet we actively feed them. We might be saying in our head, I've had enough of this, and yet I show up and feed it, feed it, feed it more. I can decide I'm not going to do that anymore. An active not doing. Oh, we love that in the Jewish tradition. We are big on active not doing. <laughs> okay? And in fact, we get criticized for it. You guys, in your tradition, a Jewish tradition, it's all about what not to do. We give lists. How do you celebrate Shabbat? You don't do this. You don't do that. You don't do this. You don't do that. You don't do this. So many no's for you. But oh, the possibility that a no brings. Oh, so beautiful. There's such a big yes under a no. And we can't get to that yes unless we say no. On Shabbat, unless we say no, it's not going to be like another day, so it won't be electronics, and it won't be the news. Yes, our tradition says, don't do the news for a day. <laughs> We're not going to do things. We're going to put a boundary around this, create a no in order to say yes. It's the middle of the night. I want to call you. I know it's not a good thing for me. I know that we've been around this over and over again, but I want to call you. And so saying no, not right now, is a yes. <laughs> when I say it's, it's enough, I've fed this enough. i fed into it enough. I'm going to give it a no. There's so much creativity and generativeness in that no, in that boundary. A loving no. A no for me, because I don't need to call you, and a no for you, because you don't need to hear from me. And it doesn't mean that relationships need to end that are full of conflict. It just means that what we've been doing, we're not going to do anymore. I'm not participating. And it doesn't mean that jobs have to change, but the job as it is, I'm not doing it anymore. Yes, we can say no and draw a boundary to create. When so much was given, it was seen as a crisis, a problem. 
Moses had to command and proclaim. Because with all of the stuff around, they couldn't actually get to the building. The, I, I, this is enough meant. It's in our way. We can't even work. So thank you, everyone. But go ahead and keep the rest. We're going to get busy with what we have because it's enough. <laughs> when to give and when not to give. Huge and one of the biggest lessons in this Mishkan. When to give and when not to give. In a Jewish tradition, everybody has to give of sadaka, right, of giving to those in need. Rich or poor, we all give. Except you can't give so much that you yourself become a burden. There is a boundary on the giving. You can say, I want to give just everything away. All my money, everything. And I said, well, then you're going to become a burden to everyone else. So watch your giving. Uh, they always feel it. <laughs> when to give and when not to give. Loving, generative choices that are challenging that we are asked to wrestle with in this Mishkan. And what were they? Wise-hearted, right? Wise-hearted. One of the ways to become hamlet, wise-hearted, is to figure out this giving and this not giving. When to give, 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 give. When to stop and say it. So, each of you, as you wrestle in this place, may you give with full open hearts. And may you know when the moment comes to say Shabbat Shalom. <laughs>
Complete 